Hi there, Jake here. I'm just going to do the initial part of uh, this video, which is really for installers uh, running through a commissioning process. But I think it's helpful to watch for all areas of installations and troubleshooting, etc. So we're just here in our training center. And obviously, we don't have PV, we just wired some in. We're just really trying to show you the mechanics of what's going on here. Um, so basically, the first thing we'd say is, if, you've known, if you're doing your first first installation and you haven't so far contacted Infinity Innovations, we would always ask you to do so. Contact us before your first installation. It's just so you can have uh, an interaction with our installation team and our tech support guys. They can make sure you've got apps on your phone before you go to site, understand some of the processes, and most importantly, that you've got login details for your installer code so that you can then put subsequent customers on and you can oversee everybody's system. Okay, when I'm referring to doing an installation, I'm actually going to refer as if we just had a single battery installation. Um, there's a separate battery, uh, separate video, sorry, for if you are doing a number of batteries, four or five of these or whatever, how many you've got. Um, for this, we're just going to talk about a single battery. We'd always say anyway, when you get batteries, take them out of the box and check them, that's fine, then turn them all off. Okay, even if you've connected all of them up here, don't always turn them on at all until we've run through a single battery setup. And once we've done all that and the whole thing is fine, then what we'll get you to do is turn the next battery on, wait 20 seconds, then the next one, wait 20 seconds, then the next one. Just make sure that that self-addressing process works exactly as we want it to do. In this video, we're gonna go through all the different lights, what they mean, or at least the bits you need for monitoring. There are other circumstances where the lights come on. And there is a very handy label on the side of the battery which nobody ever looks at or remembers is there but actually everything you need to do is on, to know is on this label on the side so you can always find it there if you need to okay when you're following the steps and the rest of this video we're just going to make sure that you have your phone pre-connected to the customer's internet okay and also that your bluetooth is powered on and then obviously this is for your record as well. So everything you're doing, if you're testing your PV voltage at the end of your MC4s or testing some ohms for resistance because you put an EPS backup, you should be doing your own documentation and your own pictures. We will recommend some additional ones during the rest of this video. Okay, so we'll start doing some of the real basics uh, of switching on. So I'm just gonna press the button on the side of the battery here now. I would also be checking that the DC breaker is turned on. I have already done that. So we can see that the battery is powering on and the batteries have different types of lights. But we can see that there's power in the battery, so that's great. Don't panic if it doesn't happen absolutely immediately. We're just waiting to get some initial power into the unit. And then what you're going to see is some lights start coming up. We're going to probably see some red lights here because we don't have any AC and we don't have any other power coming into it. This is only to check the battery. So that's absolutely normal. Again, you could check it on this side. There you go, it's starting to happen now. And then what's gonna happen is the battery light is gonna suddenly come on and be solid white, and that is what we're looking for. Okay, so about 45 seconds in. So now the unit is doing self-check-in. You can tell that because we've got two white lights. It's a solar light, the battery, they're both flashing. And then once it's gone through, the, I can hear it clicking. Once it's gone through the full self-checking process, you're gonna see what will happen next. We're just gonna see a solid battery light. Okay, so that took another 30 seconds or so, and that's where we get to, so we now have a solid battery light. So we know that you've connected the power correctly <clears throat> from the battery, and we know that the communication is correct from the battery as well, because we now have a solid light. So that's great, that's what we're looking for. Again, I'm not going to go through everything, but we've got red on the AC side, because we haven't turned the AC side on yet. Uh, we have a flashing EPS, because we don't have any EPS coming out either. So at the minute, that's just the first check, just a solid battery. So we can go ahead and check the PV now. You either need battery power or AC power for the PV bit to come in. So you need one of those on, you can't purely turn the PV on. But in this instance, I'm just gonna straight turn the rotary isolator on, which is underneath. And then we are gonna introduce some solar power, which will again just take a few moments, and then that will come through. In fact, it's quicker than that. It's on already. So that's telling us we've got power from the solar, excellent. So that's all worked through. Um, you could theoretically do that one string at a time if you wanted to be really clever, if you've got multiple strings, but there we go, we have voltage, everything's good. That's the end of that step. So we've only got AC power coming into this unit at the moment, but we've got a solid light here, bottom right. 
That's telling us a lot. Clearly it's telling us AC power, but it's also checking and confirming that the connection to the meter, and therefore the CT, is all working and all correct. Okay, that will only be solid if that side is all correct and it's getting the relevant data from that side. So brilliant if you've done it correctly. If you haven't done it correctly, don't panic. There's one of just a very few things you've probably done. That light, if it is flashing, is telling you that meter connection isn't right. Okay, so even if you looked at some monitoring and you could see some load showing from somewhere or something, it's not right. That has to be solid for the meter side to be right. But really quickly, what it's likely to be is probably if you get a flashing light, the really simple things are just you, you haven't used the right pin out on your wiring communication, so just look at the simple schematic. Okay, sometimes, and we beg people to not do it, installers have twisted multiple cables together to make an input. Please don't do that, just use a single strand and a single strand. There's two strands you're going to use, so do not twist them together. Okay, well possibly you just haven't stripped back enough copper when you've been making the fitting, so just double check that. Or the other thing that you could do is if you're not using this as a, as a standard hybrid, if you're using it as an AC for example, it's possible you haven't changed the meter type from the generic one into an AC option, that will also make your light flash. Okay, so it's, it's simply going to be one of those things. So good news, so we've got solid light on here, again that's because we've got good AC, and the meter is all working and fantastic. But here's a good opportunity to check that you've put the right size cable in, that you've worked out your cable sizing and you're happy with that. And the other thing is to check and record that you've put the right size breakers in because the Hanchu unit um, will charge at five kilowatts, even the 3.68, really good strong power charge and discharge. So that's all good. Okay, so all that was all working fantastic. Then what we're going to do is we're going to turn everything on. So AC on, PV on, battery on. Immediately the top two lights goes back into cell checking. It's going to go through all of that. And it took about maybe 45 seconds or something like that. And then it was all back on. And that's where we get to here. This is where we want to get to. Solid solar light, solid battery light, um, and a solid AC light and solid meter. So all of that is working. And we've got the EPS light flashing because you don't have anything coming out of the EPS. But if any of you have installed the EPS, um, again, whether it's EPS or gateway, you don't need to worry about the neutral earth bonding, that is all done for you internally. But if you have installed an EPS and we go in the background and enable that, that light is gonna be solid because we have power coming out of the EPS. But this might be a good op opportunity because you will have fitted uh, an earth spike. Again, just document the earth spike and make sure that that's all good. Um, and again, because this is all working and you've now got your phone out to take some pictures, what we recommend is that you go out to wherever the CT has been installed. You can even take the customer for this and you can stand back, take a picture of the CT so we can see it in, locate, in relation to everything else that's going on. And ideally we want that CT between the fuse board and the meter, get a nice clear reading of it there. Um, you can take a picture and show it and then you can do a close up and show which way that you have the arrow uh, pointing as well. Uh, so good stuff to, to record all over again. Okay, so we've got everything that we required uh, to move forward. Uh, please don't worry that this light is flashing, it's just our DC machine that we've got. You will have a solid light from your solar. So we're going to ask you to put the whole system online now. Okay, a couple of important things. First of all, if you're putting a customer online, you should be using your account to create an account for the customer. So you should be using your phone to set the customer up, not using the customer's phone because that way you won't have access to seeing what the customer has done. Next thing I would say, again, if you haven't seen the videos prior to this, is that the Hunchu system works on 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, so there are some difficult to work with routers out there. Okay, they might have band steering pushing it onto five, or it could be a mesh system. Most of them absolutely no problem, but occasionally we do definitely run into some very tricky systems. You could go into the routers and you could redo it all and change the router, but I'm not sure you should be changing customers' routers. And so what we do recommend is just people have one of these very, very simple devices. It's just a Wi-Fi extender. You can either remotely pair it or hardware it to the existing router, and then you plug it in anywhere in the property, it will also boost the signal, and then you're simply pairing 
to this unit. This unit makes it 2.4 and away we go. So if you run into a difficult site with a difficult router, you can just get them online, leave site because you can complete the job. Okay, but very simply, you're gonna then run through the pairing process. You're gonna make sure that you put the dongle into the hybrid and you're gonna make sure you can put the dongle into the batteries. These two batteries have a dongle, you put them in. Actually, the little one doesn't need a dongle, it's all inbuilt, but you put one in each battery and the relevant dongle in the hybrid. We had someone trying to pair a system for an hour or so, and they eventually told us he hadn't put any dongles in anyway. So, we've made sure they're all in, we've gone through the pairing process, everything's hunky-dory. We know that because we have blue lights. When we have blue lights and blue lights, everything is good, everything is online, and you can quickly check it for yourself. Okay, so while you're still in Local Connect, I'm gonna get you go, to go to the Data tab, um, and then we're just gonna do a bit of last very simple testing. So here, when you're in data, you can see the whole data of the system. So you can ask the customer, can you increase the load in the property? And try and get a rough idea of how much you're increasing the load by, and you simply look at the, the data page and it will go up accordingly. And the reverse of that is you can say, okay, thank you very much, turn that, all that power back off, and we should see it coming back down. So what's that telling us? That's telling us we've got the CT in the right direction. I'd like to do a last check just to double check positioning of the CT. Again, ideally between the consumer unit and the meter, not always possible. But especially if you're using one of these as an AC retrofit type system, I'm gonna also get you to turn off the solar, okay? And the load reading of the property shouldn't change just because you dropped the solar off. If it has, it could be that we maybe need to reposition that CT clamp, okay? So very simple testing just to finish it. Again, you could take some quick screenshots just to prove that, no problem. Okay, so lastly, while you're in Local Connect, if you require it, you can set up a shadow scan there and then, that's in there as well, nice and easy to do. Um, I wouldn't set up shadow scan unless there's a genuine likelihood of them requiring it, because it does actually slightly increase that small amount with the energy usage of, usage of the system. So unless it's absolutely you know, a requirement, that's why it's not set up as automatic default on the system. Okay, so that's shadow scan. You can then also come or, or look at some other areas within that. You can set up the Octopus Agile, auto charging, the weather compensation packages, all of that. And then lastly, what we're gonna ask you to do while you're on site is to come back out of that. You're gonna to go to menu on the app and then you're going fill in the warranty for the customer. So we've taken lots of really, really handy pictures of the installation. Some of those are gonna be requested for upload, but at that point, you can then fill in the warranty with the customer, putting their details in it, and that's how they get the last two years warranty. So they get 10 by default, another two years, because the warranty has been filled in. By filling it incorrectly, it will start the process of sending them an email to say your warranty's underway, and then they can do check-in for whether or not there's um, the status of the warranty and where it is in the process, and then they'll finally get a warranty email to them. 